Okay, so I'm about to conduct something monumental for me. This is a Harris Visible, which was packed decently, except that the seller unfortunately was not able to find the carriage release, meaning that the space bar was depressed or something during shipping, and the carriage received a large jolt that snapped this tooth off. That means that when you press a key, then it basically acts the same as a carriage release, which you don't want on a typewriter. This is absolutely essential for the proper operation of the spacing, the horizontal spacing on your typewriter. So this could be fixed with JB Weld, but I'm going to try something new, which is to use some solder. Now, I'm a little impatient to actually order some silver solder, so I'm just going to use stuff that I've had since high school. Uh, this fine temperature controlled thing I bought a while ago, as well as that old brown flux from my high school engineering class, and this old Rosencore. I think I've heard of Rosencore being maligned, but <laughs> I'm impatient. And I'm going to be using a special. trying to carefully institute special grip to allow me to hold the soldering iron and introduce solder <laughs> with one hand while precisely positioning that tooth with the other. It's going to be daunting. First, let's get some flux. Okay. Onto the surface. Mm. Ideally, I would have a better applicator than this horrid mess right now. Okay. Nice thing is that the surface is around the joints, which I've already cleaned with acetone, are already anodized or something. Don't know how much flux I need, but can't go wrong. First, let's tin the tip. This thing. Make sure it's actually hot enough to melt. I have a fan behind me blowing the fumes away. It also blows the liquid wrench fumes away too. Okay, that tip should be ready. Let's double check that in position. Okay. Can I fit my tool? That is the question. Perfect. Quite that tight bone finds.
That is totally not attached at all. But it is bonding at least to one part. It's just that my alignment was messed up. Still have flux to spare. Dear goodness, I should have done this from the beginning. My problem had long been with heating both parts enough so that all the solder melts at once. Meaning that I should have used my butane torch. <laughs> I should have just gone ahead. last a miracle I mean yeah this was basically hell to fix well I pretty much cut out like 12 minutes of me struggling to use a soldering iron to try to get that whole surface heated when again I should have just been using this butane torch which up to now we've mainly been using to create creme brulee but yeah I should remember that generally you need a much more spread out as opposed to concentrated heat source that can help you heat both parts evenly and enough such that the basically your liquid metal glue seeps and attaches through all parts of the joint. Um, so I did have to do a few reheatings to get it this aligned and now I'm extremely hopeful like yeah it was quite dismaying but now I can see that this does seem to be a pretty viable method for repairing an escapement. Wonderful. I mean, of course I might be a bit concerned for the amount of heat I introduced into this area, but I mean, the floating dog is still working. And I'm guessing- ah, right, right. Probably one obvious advantage of soldering compared to um, brazing and the only difference is the heat, amount of heat used, is that soldering is probably under any temperature in which the metallurgical properties of the parts here would change. So after cooling, it should just go back to normal. And now I can finally reassemble this thing. And eventually, sometime from now, I'll show you guys a video of this thing in action. Um, but otherwise, there are still some dents here from the big jolt that pushed this rail while the carriage was otherwise stationary. Um, so, now I'm very happy. So again, now from this perspective, you can see that pretty much when the space bar was by means pressed down during chipping, it caused that tooth to be engaged, and hence the one that took the blow. And
Anyways, now that is repaired, when I press, the escapement will be able to be accordingly blocked in this motion. Well, so assume that you, for example, are at this point using the floating dog, which is a lower tooth. It would be at that point, and then when you press the space or any key, the next tooth will lower into place to block it. And when you release it, it will allow the escape wheel here, or star wheel, to rotate and engage the next tooth and so on. And that achieves the mono spacing of your characters. Okay, so I have the carriage back on. And in terms of how to get it off, you first have to, oh goodness, go to, uh, where is it? Here. So you see that little knob there? Now the thing about that knob is that it's kind of hard to pull it out. since the knot might be in the way. So I kind of had to painstakingly use something to pull the string on the left loose, So I, and then something else to carefully pull the knot out so that I would have just a thin part of the string, allowing me to have enough space to pull this off of this pin, angling downward. Um, anyways, once that's done, then you can just quickly unscrew these guys. I have to find the source of that sound. Oh goodness. But, yeah, once you've removed these screws, basically this thing just will very easily come off of this retaining rail here. Okay, and of course, moment of truth. It works. It's wonderful. And it's in adjustment, though of course I do need to replace this ribbon. And I'm probably in the mood to just go ahead and unspool what I've been using on my mignon. And put it into the, this machine.